Hello everybody, I'm Marsden64. First off, let me say I'm annoyed because I just finished recording this episode and my sound wasn't recording. So I am moderately upset about that, but that does mean I won't F up on this episode. Secondly, I apologize for not making any videos in, a, in the past week and a half. I've been really busy with work, but now that I have a consistent schedule, I can actually record a bit of a backlog and I can uh, possibly upload once a day. Thirdly, I know this isn't the one that I mentioned I'd be doing, but I'm literally going to record that, like, right after this. So, chill, chill your jets. Today we're going to be Let's Playing, if I could click on the thing, Star Trek dot, Star Treks dot exe. Enter. It's a game made by Interplay. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before, trademark. Welcome to Let's Play Star Trek the 25th Anniversary. This is a game for DOS and also for CD. You can just... It, you. I'm using the DOS version, the CD version is better, but I feel that because the CD version has, like, full voice acting, I won't be doing as much, so it'll be a little bit more boring. It does have, like, the actual people, you know, talking, though, so if you want to play this game, try and find the CD version, because it's quite a good bit better. Better sound, better everything. First episode is Demon World. Through the Enterprise's primary mission is exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Weapons will be set to minimal strength, and the ship's computers will simulate damage. Ca I'm not doing a female voice. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. You press S to raise shields, W to raise your weapons, and now we are fighting. Now this is uh, one half of the game. Ow, they got a cheap shot out on us, assholes. We had just started, you dicks. Okay, now this is half of the game where you go around in kind of a pseudo 3D way. It's actually a pretty neat effect, but uh, it's also really freaking awkward to do sometimes. And, like, you will lose a lot of these fights that you are forced to do. So, get ready to save and save scum, and I cannot wait till I have to do those. Like, I can already freaking tell you. I cannot wait to do those! Just mash it on the buttons. Left mouse button shoots, uh, phasers. The right one shoots, uh, tor tor torpon fotitos. <laughs> yes! That is exactly what I meant to say. Oh. Uh. Let's go ahead and repair our, our uh, photon torpedoes because they knocked out our photon torpedoes. Now, the way this works is that we're going around and uh, they can go ahead and... Okay, thank you, uh, Scotty. You know what, Scotty? Oh, we got him. Okay. Computers estimates the Republic is crippled, Captain. Captain Patterson extends his congratulations, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Okay. I will have to explain the fighting some other time. This game has a lot of talking. A lot of talking. So just get used to that. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien lifeforms have been attacking the settlement near the mines at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the Colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Stars sect. The descriptions of the attacks vary, but all say the attacks are, the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. The Starfleet wants you to determine what the nature of these creatures is, and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. Okay. Now, there are two ways to play, like, two forms to this game. There's this, where you're in the uh, captain's chair, and just looking out, we will always be moving forward, so just deal with that. And then the other one is uh, 
on the ground, but for right now, whoopsie doodles. <laughs> okay, Ned Flanders. Uh, but for now, we can go ahead and, you know, click on these guys. I think we can talk to them, too. No, we can't do that here, unfortunately. But we can go ahead and click on them and tell them to do things. Scotty here can repair things. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> oh, I think that's just like, hey, tell me what's going on. Are we going to explode soon? I think he just always says she can't take it. I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, this guy, this is, uh, Sulu. Sulu can put us into orbit, and I have... Oh, ray shields. Okay. And, uh... This guy, this is Chekhov. He can arm weapons and make us, you know, uh, go into warp speed. We can talk to Spock! Okay. Why can't we talk to anyone else? Let's talk to Spock. I advise referring to star map and setting course for Pollock's system, sir. You can also, uh make us talk to the computer which can look up things. Look up Spock. Spock, full name uncodable in English language. It tells us about dudes, we can look up dudes, we can look up Pollux 5. Apparently we can't. Pollux? It, can, it tells us about the things. Pollux 5 is, you know, stuff and it's emerged from an ice age. Ba-boom, all that stuff. Here's a her who has a really silly look at her jaw when she opened. Nye. Nye. Oh, she's not doing. Nye. There we go. He can. She can go ahead and send a message, and uh, tell us what her orders are. For right now. Oh, and this I. Uh, this tells us what our missions were. That's not too big of a deal. We can also teleport and save. For right now, let's go ahead and have Sulu warp us out. Not do that. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Chekhov who warps us. Chekhov. Now, this right here is the uh, United Federation of Planets map, and it's pretty damn stupid. Basically, old DOS games would always have, like, this thing that was in case you pirated the game. You'd have to, like, have the manual in order to complete it. The only problem is, I owned this game, and I lost the manual, so I didn't know where I was going. If you go to any of the wrong places, Romulans and Vikings and crap attack you. You know how it is. You're going to unfaired waters, Vikings beat the hell out of you. This right here is Pollux 5. So let's head to it. You have arrived at Pollux 5. Man, I'm going slower than the last, than like my last take of this. Message from Hi Robert. Welcome, Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please beam down and meet with him. Okay, now, in order to beam down, we have to get close. Let's go into orbit. I don't really know why they make us do that. I mean, there are some things that you can do in orbit as well that, you know, you can't do out of orbit. So, it's just a, a way to elongate things, I guess. And now, we can teleport down. Let's go, let's go do that. Oh, the shields are... Why are the shields up? Put them down, Sulu. Okay. I swear I told him to put those up, though. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and go down. Oh, that voice, that, that, that noise is piercing. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence, and I accidentally clicked escape. Captain, I mean, uh, hold on, I gotta do my best bones impersonation. Captain, the floor of this planet is very interesting. I wonder how useful they could be for medicinal purposes. <coughs> <coughs> now this is the uh, other uh, part of the game. This It's a point and click adventure. We click and Kirk will go over and do whatever the hell he wants. He can hump this guy. Apparently he can't. Let's go ahead and uh, you, you right click and these are all your options. You can look at things. Let's go ahead and look at Kirk. James Tiberius Kirk, Captain of the Enterprise, he's always happy to run an errand of mercy. That sounds a little creepy. Let's go ahead and talk to ourselves. This planet's as beautiful as everyone says it is. The trees, the fresh air, the freezing cold. Come on, Bones, the cold will improve your circulation. Some people get too much circulation. But um psh. And you also have the uh, pickup function. Can I pick up this man? I have failed to obtain this man. We can also use him. Can I use this man? I may not use this man. 
you can uh, go into your inventory here and uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and set our phaser to, sh to stun and point it at Bones. Stop pointing that damn thing at me, Jim! Put that thing away! You lost your mind, Jim! This ain't the OK Corral, Jim! Put that away! Uh, this game has witty banter. Please do not aim your phaser at me, sir. Oh yeah, that's our enzyme. He's the first one to die. I'll explain that later. Put the, put the damn phaser... Put the phaser away, Jim! <laughs> I should probably relax more, I, I agree. There we go. I put... Stop talking to the trees, Jim! You need a vacation. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. I... There... Okay, now, you have choices in this game to say things, and usually... It doesn't really matter. You get scored later on, depending on how you do. For example, if you choose this one, you will probably be scored poorly. Been seeing ghosts and boogeyman, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. That's totally Kirk, but you'll get scored poorly for doing it. Let's go the neutral route. We aren't going the uh, zealous route here of, I am honored to destroy the demons for you. We're going, uh, hey, we're here, and we're here to help. What do you need us to do? Not aliens, per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons. And, uh, he thinks that we will help him, uh, help, help them help us help us all. Aside from seeing demons, have there any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mind itself? The air is exceptionally stable, and uh, it's good for getting, you know, all kinds of minerals. There's been a cave-in, however, and a dude is stuck in it. So we gotta go help him pretty quickly. Thank you for the courtesy, Mr. Kirk. May you receive the guidance and protection of our god as you complete this divine mission. Alright, now we could go uh, look at the injured dude that he mentioned. There, There's two injured dudes, actually. We'll see both of them eventually. But first, we have to go up here. Oh my god, it's Klingons! Quickly grab your phasers, let's send them to stun, and... Ba-boom! Stun ya! Stun... You see a small explosion, yes. Federation scum? Oh no! They got him! No, they didn't. He's alright. I guess this isn't such a great planet after all. So, there are Klingons on this planet. However, they seem to be made of plasticine, because one dropped a hand. Captain, an unrazored phaser and an unknown energy beam... F oh, whatever. Is everyone okay? We survived. Did you register any disruptors? No, Captain. Why? Are Klingons there? No, just an idea. Kirk out. Fascinating. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Bach. Fascinating. I believe to suspect we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spock? I mean, Spock. I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. And I take the detached uh, Klingon's hand. Now, one second. Ow. Okay, um, we don't really know that we need to do this yet, but they will tell us later, and we're right here, so we might as well grab it. We can grab these berries. Now, let's head out. Now, you could, this game's a lot better than a lot of point-and-click adventure games, because it does tell you what you should do. There is a lot of, like, there, there's not as much as other games as this, but there is some, like, okay, what do I do? Do I use this key on the bamboo? No, do I mush the bamboo against the panda? Hey, that works. It, there is some of that, but a lot of it is actually fed to you with hints and stuff. This mission's pretty easy, so we won't be seeing any of that. But, like, if you talk to Spock and Kirk and your Enzyme is never important. If you talk to them, then they give you information and stuff. Captain, demons and supernatural creatures are almost by definition illogical. Yet it is evident these people believe that they have seen it. Barring illness or mass hysteria, I agree a real problem seems to exist. So they all tell you certain things, and for the most part, they're also pretty damn hilarious. This game has a pretty good amount of humor in it. So, uh... I, I really like this game. It's a very good game. It's not, you know, amazing, but it's probably the best Star Trek game I've ever played. And I have played quite a few. Alright, so here we are. This guy is not looking good for the wear. You'll understand if I don't stand up, I hope. I am not well. I would say you're not well, buddy. You seem to have a concussion and a broken eye. Excuse me, a black eye. Broken eye? Whatever. 
Okay. It's Dr. Chubb. This man is in no condition to talk. He just talked to us! Whatever. I am worried about Brother Chubb. Can you examine him, Doctor? That is like the worst name for a dude. Do not name your son Chubb. Jim, this man... I mean, Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed the... The infection. The John Yuen infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects may be fatal. The infection normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. These guys say that they can make us hypotoxin, but we need some berries. Well, thank but Jesus that we have berries. We just happened to pick them. I had a craving. Okay, let's go ahead and take the berries. Now, we could be talking to all these guys and finding out things. We don't need to do that. If you want to do that, you totally can. I would totally suggest playing this game yourself. You don't really need to after watching my Let's Play. You'll know pretty much all there is to it. You'll know all the puzzles and everything, so that kind of defeats the purpose. But if you feel like, you know, just having a good time, having a good time, and you can just talk to everyone and look at everything, and there's a lot to see in this game. A lot to see. Like, you just look at so many things. It's such a full game, full of a lot of crap. Hello there. The settings on the RDAC 4 have already been set to make the thing. Blah, 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 techno babble. It synthesizes a lot of it. Let's go take it to Brother Chubb. But first, there's other stuff we can do in here. I want to use this case. You are interested in my little museum of curiosities. <laughs> yes, tell us more about these things. I enjoy talking about these treasures. Now, only two of these are actually important, so let's go ahead and look at them. The skull of a small animal. The skull of a modern Salodi, the largest creature native to this planet. About the size of a house cat, the Salodis combine a rather insectoid pattern with four-legged reptilian form, including praying mantis-like forelimbs. Okay, that's kind of cool. And, uh, a twist of metal. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. Twist of, twisted metal, the video game. This game... <laughs> God, Star Trek's way ahead of his time. This chunk of rock is a rather greatly example. It's just rock, but, you know, it's cool. And it's also man-made, so uh, other people must have lived here before. Interesting. Alright, so he says that we can have it. Oh, please don't tell me about your Museum of Curiosities again. Yes, tell me about these things. Uh, don't go into them. I really don't give a crap. Okay. What I do want is I want to pick up these things. Let's go over to the case. There are only two items in this case that we uh, desire. We want the twisted metal and the, uh, this. The skull. Skull. Alright. Let's go ahead and use the hand on uh, this guy. He'll tell us about the hand. What a fascinating piece of equipment. So it's a mechanical hand and not a, you know, bloody-ass Klingon hand. That would be disgusting. Perhaps one of you can do it. Basically he's saying we can fix the machine at this workbench. Mr. Spock can very obviously do that because he is Mr. Spock and Mr. Spock can do everything. I like the animation in this game, by the way. It has a very nice uh, style to it. They don't have mouths, but it's still I still find it pretty cool. Alright, we have yeah, we have fixed the damage circuitry. See how the fingertips have micro-sized sensors? I wonder what use they have. How interesting. It has sensors on it. That will be important later. For now, I'm getting a headache from talking so much. What the hell? <laughs> oh, God. Be gentle with me. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning. Work sucks. That guy has, like, weird-ass goat legs. He always reminded me of a goat with a giant beard and weird-ass hair. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, hand this dipotoxin off to Brother Chubb. You poor man. Not only did you get your skull beaten in, but you also have a terrible name. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Brother Chubb. Please tell us about the demons. Alright, the demons attacked us as we approached the mine. What did they look like? They're like demons that have plagued our folk since before people left Earth. Huge muscular demons with ruddy skin, truly the manifestation of evil. So, they do not look like Klingons. Demons do not follow us. So, uh, that just means that we don't know what's going on here. Alright, I am Brother Steven, loop-de-doop-doo. -doop -doo. 
He's uh, talking like Spock. The other guys don't really like him as much. Whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, head up to the mountain. And we're already nearing the end of this episode. The game works in uh, episodes where it's like... It, it, it only has six levels, quote-unquote. And it... And each one is set into an episode, such as this one. Basically, it would act like a episode of the show would act. It tries to emulate the show, and it does it pretty well. So, um... Here we are at the, uh, cave-in. Now, let's go ahead and save the game, because this is one of the many points in the game where you can die. Well, kind of. Murder. You put out your phasers because, hey, let's go ahead and blow up these rocks. Assuming fire positions. And, uh, what happens is if... Oh! Boom! He's dead, Jim. That's what happens. If you're going to die, your ensign saves you. If you die after that, you lose. Also, if either Bones or McCoy die, you also lose, and there are times where they die, you know, without you. You'll, uh, the Ensign will always be the first one to die in a situation, so he is like your extra life point, in case you F up. But, oh, okay, I forgot, I need to set it to kill. Set phaser to murder! Set phasers to fun! Let's go ahead and destroy this rock that would fall on us and kill us, and now we can safely uh, put down all these rocks. There's a guy there. Bones, go ahead and uh, check out that guy. Not Spock. God, they look so similar from the back. It's a near thing, but he'll live. I really don't know how he survived that. If my enzyme got r just had a rock roll over him, and this guy had them fall on him, I don't even... Thank you for saving, thank you kind souls for saving my life. I will uh, rest here and then, you know, say, hey, they saved me. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, use this hand on this, because this looks like a touchpad, and it had sensors on it. If you look at it, it'll be like, this looks like a touchpad from the Enterprise. The door opens. It's weird, why is there a giant-ass door down here in the mines? Hey, we're in a giant thing. This is obviously not the work of the colonists. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this. It appears to be an abstract piece of alien art. Okay. Let's go ahead and fiddle with these. Now, this confused me at first, but the way you do this, it's rather simple. You just gotta move them until like they're a little bit below center. Until there's only one on each of them. I'm not sure how you know this. Uh, the, this is one of the puzzles in the game where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just found it out by accident, basically. Welcome to our home! Thank you for repairing our Sinambatron. Hands up, Green and Scaly, you're trespassing on Federation ter territory. That's obviously not the right thing to do. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Where are you? Where do you come from? Or, we did fix your machine. Can we write off the repair bill off ag against rent on this land? Let's go ahead and say this, because it's funny. So, the friend, you're not the only traitors in this universe. You've been asleep for a long time. How do you know the Ferengi exist? Also, Ferengi didn't exist in this original series. I don't even... Anyway. <laughs> yes, Captain Kirk. Excusing the settlers' debts is an excellent way of ensuring that our people will be friends. We call ourselves Nuarians. Thousands of years ago, we saw meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age, so we hid out in here. However, we set it to when our moon would make another cycle, and uh, the moon exploded. So, <laughs> we never woke up. Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. The demons are a defense mechanism that will pull the horrors from your mind, your greatest enemy, and try and scare you away from us as we sleep. Oh, whoa, alas, the key is missing, and I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. Gee, I wonder what the key is. But, uh, for right now... Oh, someone is talking to me. Hi there, Janisha. Let's go ahead and, uh, hand this off, because... There he is. Jim, think about that skull we picked up from Brother Steven. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? 
Yes, I do indeed. Here you go. A child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people did not, who did not slumber have become. Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred according to our precepts of our religion. May I keep this? Of course, I think you will get along very well. Or you could say, I think I should return to where I got it, which, you know, would make the colonists happy, but not really these guys. Or, no, I'll keep it as a memento for myself to remember me by. Let's go ahead and do this. Because uh, we want as good of peace as we can get with new aliens. And let's hand off the key. Because that's very obviously the key. You found the key! I can now turn off the things and everyone will be hunky-dory. I would like to join your federation. Go in peace. We'd be glad to accept your application. We look forward to meeting them. We also look forward to having discourse. Depends on which kind. With the colonists. Farewell. May the Holy One bless you. Live long and prosper. Gosh, Spock, you don't have to be so goddamn dramatic all the time. Beam me up, Mr. Scott. Ow. Rest in peace. Rest, rest in peace. Rest in peace, earphone users. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your reports on the problems at Pollux 5 and evaluate your performance at 97%. You and your crew receive three commendation points. I don't understand why. Uh, getting getting these commendation points don't really do anything except at the end of the, end of the game you're like, Yay, I did amazing! In my last uh, attempt at doing this, I literally did the exact same things I did. Exactly the same. And I got 100%. Now I get 97. I don't understand why. It doesn't make much sense, and it really shouldn't matter. I'll go ahead and load the one where I got four commentation points instead, but you know. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed. Outstanding work, Jim. I might have known there weren't any demons. We all have demons of our own bones. The ones that we can't confront are often the hardest to deal with. These demons were based on fear, Captain. A human failing. I don't know, Spock. Everything I've read about demons describes them as having pointy ears. <laughs> oh, you. And with that, the first episode is complete. And we move on to the second one. Da, 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 da. Hijacked. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Almost all missions start like this. On screen, Lieutenant. The USS Enterprise is to report immediately to Beta Miamid. The USS Masada has failed to report as scheduled. Determine nature of delay and take whatever measures are necessary. I don't really know why they have the Enterprise doing this, but alright. So in the next episode, we will go ahead and head off to Beta Miamid. Let's go ahead and just make a crash course for this planet in the meantime. We will never be moving any closer to this planet, by the way. But yes, that was the first episode of uh, Let's Play Star Trek. Let's call it Starcraft. Star Trek 25th Generation. The next episode, we'll head off to Bam Ahmed and have us some fun. So uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.